All right, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Rat Rod Bob's School of Rat Rodology in a little shop where dreams come true. Now, some of you guys uh, want to know how I do the stitches. Uh, even though I got a lot of videos of the past build shows that I'm going to show it again on this truck right now. So here we go. So I got these bands I got tacked on. What I'm going to do is take the grinder with the flat wheel and just sand, just smooth these, these down a little bit and then I'm going to put some stitches over that. Kind of look something like that when I grind those spot wheels down. Nothing fancy. Now one thing I want to say is, before you start stitch welding, you're gonna have some spots with me anyway, where you got a gap right there. Anywhere that, that is not touching, you want to take the hammer and tap that down. In my case, I got that little stubby ball peen hammer I'd take to beat that down. Anywhere you got a little gap there. In some of the places, if you're not right beside a tack weld, you don't want to go down or don't want to stay down. So what I do, when I get a spot like that, I, I beat down one spot. And I'm gonna put me a stitch there. And then I could beat down that stitch. It's easier to beat it down right beside a tack or a stitch. So I put a stitch there and I beat a little bit more stitch until I get it all the way down. Then when I get that, get it beat down best I can. Like I said, some spots I'm about to stitch it, then beat some more. And uh, so I got it ground down and beat down some. I could start stitching. And the uh, way I do it is uh, I just start running a little stitch. Oh, about. About that long, something like that. It ain't gotta be perfect. About that far apart, three quarter inch. So, like I said, it ain't gotta be perfect. Because you can, if you want to, you can take a measure ruler or something and measure exact measurements between each stitch and exact length on each one. Uh, but to me, if you do that, it's not, it's not gonna look uh, natural. It's gonna look like a machine done it. And uh, me, I don't want that. I want it to be kind of random. Some will be further apart, some will be longer. You see what I'm talking about in a little bit. By the way, I don't take, I don't take and mark every stitch. I don't mark any of them. I just done that just to show you an example. When I start stitching, I just start stitching. I don't have no marks to go by. Uh, like I said, if you want to look like a machine done it, you can measure and mark every one and then stitch it. 
but I'm just gonna start stitching. So I got my wire feed on four and a half. I got amps at the lowest setting. I got 23,000 wire and gauge set on 20. Of course, it can go down to 15, but it's a little breezy in here. So I put it on 20. By the way, I'm using uh, 23,000 wire. And uh, you see some big welding how-to videos to tell you to cut that little tip off the end of that wire before you start a new weld. So you have a good clean wire to start with. And that's probably true if you're doing some real, real fine, detailed, precision welding. But uh, for this stitches, uh, I just keep welding stitch after stitch after stitch. So yeah, that. Yeah, another thing too, uh, I like to start my weld on the clean, <laughs> in this case on the clean uh, metal, and go to the rough, dirty metal. And uh, you'll hear it when I'm welding, you'll hear it, it'll start out clean and it'll hit that rusty and start popping, pop, pop, pop. So the cleaner you got that, the better off you're gonna be, but uh, yeah. So what happens, I start on the clean. As soon as I hit that rust, you hear it start popping. But uh, so what I do, I start on the clean and weld, let it pop a little bit and try to get a little weld on there. And then after, you, after it pops a few times, then you can come back over that rusty part and then it pretty much weld pretty good there. Yeah, so obviously I'm not gonna stitch up the whole cab right now. I'm just doing this to show you how I do it. Uh, but after you get the stitches in, you've got your spots and still stick it up a little bit, you take that hammer between them stitches and uh, it, it's really easy to, hand, to close them gaps back up after you get it stitched. So you have to get it stitched. Take your hammer and go back over any spots that's still sticking up, knock it down. And then take the flat wheel, run back over it. You see what I'm doing? I'm just taking the flat wheel and doing one stitch at a time, run it down each stitch. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right, after you grind it, looks like crap, right? I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. 
Now I'm gonna hit it with the wire wheel and spray some black on it and rub some silver over that to show you what that looks like while I'm at it. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is spray it black, paint it black. I, use, I like to use satin black. But uh, yeah, I guess any gloss black, flat black, any work, but I use satin. Uh, let it dry. Obviously, I'm just doing one spot. I'm not doing the whole truck just to show you what it's going to look like. You're going to need some uh, silver paint or metallic. I use metallic aluminum, silver. It don't matter. Just something like that. Uh, get your spray bottle. These are like these are cheap at Walmart. Great value. Paint thinner, mineral spirits. Get your piece of denim. Save your old blue jeans. Cut your piece of denim out of the legs. Take your mineral spirits. Squirt some mineral spirits on that piece of denim. About like that. I like to use gloves when I spray paint, keep paint off my hands. Shake the paint up real good. You want to dose this rag down real good with paint, silver paint. more the better. Both sides. Then you want to take your heat gun, plug it in, Dry that paint. See it start bubbling, you know you're getting there. I like to heat mine up to it quits bubbling. When it quits bubbling, you're probably good to go. Take your rag, fold it up a little bit. And uh, start rub real lightly, get in the spot where you uh, can fix it if it screws it up. Looks good. I like to rub it in the direction the wind's gonna be blowing, kind of look like the grain. Makes it look natural. And if your paint gets a little too dry on the rag, I mean, you could do probably the whole roof of this truck with that one rag, just take your your uh, mineral spirits and spray just a little bit on that rag and loosen that paint up so you can keep going. And uh, the more you rub, it's gonna, the more it's gonna shine after it's starting to start get dry on the rag, keep rubbing it. And uh, it'll look like you put a coat of clear over it because it's gonna kind of polish that paint out. All right, that's kind of the look I'm looking for right there. Yeah, bare metal look with the stitches. It'll give you kind of an idea of what it's gonna look like, the whole truck. 
not much light on the back side of this truck here, but we'll see if we can still look at it. All right, we're gonna do this same way on back here. Now if you if you got too much, if you get too much paint on it, you take the heat gun and heat it up a little bit more, dry it out some more. See, it don't take no time to get that bare metal look. Again, I'm just doing one spot to show you what it looks like and how I do it. If it gets to where you start running out of paint on the rag, I mean, if you don't want to come, none come off on there, you just take the spray bottle, spray a little uh, paint thinner on it, and then you'll get a lot more, then loosen that paint up, you can keep going.